I've been asked two questions quite recently. One was how to make a storage cube, and the other one was how to put um, a square base into a handbag. It's both the same technique, so I've kind of covered both of those techniques in making this cube for you today. I've used nine inch um, squares. You could make this in any size you like, as long as the, the, the pieces are actually square. Um, it's quite soft, so it's easy to sew through, but it's rigid enough to hold things, maybe um, toys in the kids' room or magazines, or if you want some storage in your sewing room, you could th keep things like your fabrics or your notions and threads and spare bobbins and things like that. So let's get cutting out our squares and let's get sewing. I have uh, five pieces of nine inch square fabric cut from my outer fabric and on the back of this I put some fusible fleece and fusible fleece is um, an iron on polyester wadding so you just simply iron it onto the back of your fabric and it gives your fabric a little bit of stability but it's not stiff. So th this box should kind of stand alone, but it'll still be soft enough, which makes it easier to sew. If you want your fabric to be a little bit firmer, use something like um, Bosal um, a foam stabiliser, and that's going to be a little bit stiffer. But for the purposes of this storage box, this is going to work absolutely fine. So five perfect squares. These squares can be any size you like. So if you wanted to make a smaller box, three inches, four inches, five inches, or the centimetre equivalent. You can make larger boxes, but the bigger the box you make, or the cube you make, the more likelihood the sides are going to flop in. So I've chosen nine inches for these. Um, and I've also cut nine, uh, sorry, five pieces of lining fabric. Um, no stabiliser on this, but I have used some spray starch, so again, that gives it a little bit of firmness. Now, to give this cube a little bit of a difference, I'm going to put some handles, so I'm going to do this first. So I've cut two pieces of webbing, which measure 10, 20, 24 inches in length, and it's one inch wide webbing. And it's the cotton webbing, because I like the feel of it. You can buy polyester as well. And this I'm going to sew all the way across two sides of my cube like so, evenly distance from either side. And when I sew this on, I'm not going to sew right up to the top of the cube because I need to sew the top of the cube to the lining, so I'll need a seam allowance there. So I'm going to stop around about two inches down, which, which gives me a little bit of leeway so I can sew that easier. So to hold this in place, I'm not going to pin, I'm going to use my 505 spray. and give it a good dosage and then pop this on. Measure that if you're not sure, but I'm quite good at doing that by eye. And then I'll need to do the other handle exactly the same to mirror image that on the other side. So making sure that my handle isn't twisted Another good old dose of 505. And this goes on in the opposite direction. Make sure your fabric, if it, if it does have a directional print like my In the Woods print does, that they're facing in opposite directions. We don't want one panel that's upside down. So we'll sew these two in place first of all. I'm using a quite a long stitch on my sewing machine. At the moment, I'm not going to be using my foot pedal because there's a dog lying on it. Good girl, all right, there you go. So this is, um, I'm using about three on this stitch. So it's, it's a little bit longer. So let's just sew down one side. Again, I'm going to stop a couple of inches from the top with the needle down, turn around, sew straight across, and then back down the opposite side. Oh, went a little bit too far then. There we go. And the same across the other handle. Closer to me, that's better. So 
So you could mark the same spot. I need to stop sewing here at the same point as I did previously. But I can see by eye that that's lining up. So we turn this around. So straight across and back down the other side. And straight onto the opposite handles. Stop at the same point and turn around. So I'll just snip these two apart now. this side stop at the same point Could decorate this with buttons as well that'd be quite nice even a row of buttons all across the handle I love working with buttons and I'm using the same color of thread so it, it just blends into the color of the handle but you could use a contrasting thread if you like if you're quite confident with your top stitching So those are the two handles that are going to go either side of my cube. So let's sew the rest of the cube together. So right sides together. I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to go backwards just a couple of stitches before I go forwards just to secure those straight stitches and stop them coming undone. And down to the end. And we'll do those backward stitches right at the end as well. Now make sure you get these in the right order because we don't want two handle panels next to each other. So the handle panel goes next to this one. Again, right sides together. If you prefer to pin, then do so. But I think you'll find that's more time consuming than actually sewing. A quarter of an inch seam allowance doesn't have to be set in stone as quarter of an inch as long as all of your seam allowances are exactly the same. So you may find it easier, like I do sometimes, to use the edge of the foot as your seam guide so it may be a little bit more than um, a quarter of an inch. So let's sew the final panel in here and then we'll sew that base in, which is what you were all asking about. These little the cubes are so useful as well. I've had them with um, dog treats in them. Uh, in my So Useful book, I actually made one with a picture of one of my dogs on the front of it to keep toys and biscuits and things in. I printed the picture onto um, printable fabric and then just used it as a piece of applique on the front. They make great toy storage or baby boxes even. You could applique names, initials, um, pictures, words, free motion embroidery or use applique. You could quilt them. Just do some cross hatch quilting by drawing diagonal or square lines all over them and, and quilting them together. So you can really make them personal and different. This is just a basic way of making the cubes. Now then, this is the bit that you've been asking about. Putting in the base. And this works exactly the same way if you're putting in a square base in a handbag. And the trick is, when you put the base fabric right sides together with the bottom of the, uh, the cube or the bag, it's very tempting to start putting the edge of your base fabric up to the seam. Don't do that, you're going to put your base fabric up to the seam allowance, so overlap it. If you're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you need to overlap this section here by a quarter of an inch. If it's larger, you overlap by that amount. And if you're not sure, there's your seam allowance. If you squish that to one side, then line up the edge of your fabric to the edge of that seam. And we'll stick a pin in there. Now when you come to the other end here, the same thing should happen. So the edge of your fabric here 
overlaps by the seam allowance. I have a pin in there. And that's going to happen all the way around. There's my final point. So you can see there again, when you match up the seams, this bit will overlap the seam in the corner. Okay, then we're going to sew all the way around here. I'm not going to start in the corner, I'm going to start on the side, just because I find that easier. I'm going to use my needle up down function on my Butterick sewing machine. If you don't have one when you get into the corner, you're going to need to turn your hand wheel to make sure the needle goes down so that you can pivot. And then sew. I'm going to take the pin out at this point so I can see where I'm going. And I'm just easing out the seam because I don't want to sew the fabric closed together. So I'm not pinching anything. I can feel where that seam is. So when I come right up to the seam, I'm going to stop with the needle down, lift my foot up, turn my work around, and then realign the raw edges here. When you're sewing anything like this, which can seem a little bit fiddly, all I'm concerned about is the fabric that's underneath the needle. What goes on here doesn't matter, just keep it out of the way. So aligning those two pieces together, don't pull, don't stretch the fabric, keep it nice and flat, and then we'll go down to the next seam. And again, as I'm coming up to the corner, I'm going to take the pin out, simply so I don't spike myself. I've got that overlap of fabric here right up to where I can feel where that seam is. So you should be able to gauge it by eye because I know I need to stop around about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Just make sure the fabric's not tucked and these two seams are lying flat together. And so. Lining up those edges still, so that's why I'm stopping all the time, just to make sure that they're lined up. That pin can come out. Let's flatten out that corner a little bit. Up to the seam. Needle down, foot up, turn around. A bit like line dancing. Squish you out of the way. Foot down. And so. Coming up to the final seam here. So again, slapping up that corner and back to where we started. Let's turn this the right side out. That's what your seam should look like, where all the three uh, pieces join together right there in the centre. So you should be able to see that right there. Perfect. Now, to make this a little bit more rigid, um, I would normally press at this point, and I'd press the seams together so that you've got that nice crisp seam. On top of that, you can sew along that seam as well, so I'm going to do just that. I don't want to make a big seam allowance here because I don't want to make the outside of the bag smaller than the inside because I won't be doing this with the lining. So I'm simply going to pinch that seam together like so and then sew as close as I can to the seam. I'm going to lengthen my stitch 
because this is just a top stitch and I'm putting my nose right over the top of here so I can see exactly where I'm going and again stop with the needle down so again squishing that seam together and I'm going to do this on all of the seams It'll just help to give the bag uh, or the cube a little bit a little bit more structure. Now to keep this really neat, when I get down to the corner, I'm not going to sew straight over that seam where all three pieces came together. I'm going to stop about an eighth of an inch from the end and I'm just going to lock my stitches there. Okay, so you can see how already that's starting to look. It's a bit more professional, doesn't it? But it gives it a firmness as well. So I'm going to sew around all of those seams in the same way. And because I've stopped just before the end, when I come to sew across the bottom seams, all of those three seams should all match up nice and neatly in the corner without any kind of overlap. What I'm going to do then, because I'll carry on with this while you go and put the kettle on or something, is going to sew the... Um, the lining pieces together in the same way. I'm not going to top stitch the seams, there's no point. Um, so I'll sew the lining pieces together, but this time, when I come to the bottom, I'm going to leave a gap of around about four inches in one side because I'll need to turn the whole thing inside out at some point. So off, off you go and do your thing for a minute and uh, I'll get on with sewing these. So there's the outside of the cube, all so, and there's the lining, and again in the lining I've left that gap, where are you, so I can turn it the right side out. So leave the lining inside out, and we're going to put the two pieces right sides together, so drop the outside inside the inside. to push the handles out of the way because I don't want to sew over those and then we're going to sew the two pieces together all the way around the top lining up those side seams again as we go. You want to pin? Pin. I'm not going to. Right so the thread out of the way, needle down, dog out of the way. <laughs> Let's get going. And we are finished. There we go. So let's push the lining right inside, snip off these threads. There, I'll give that uh, one extra press. And that is my cube all finished. I think it looks really good, don't you? Just tidy these bits up. There we go. There, so that's all ready for the kids' bedroom to store my fat quarters, my sewing notions and bits and bobs, or magazines, or um, I, I like to use uh, old, my interfacing and things like that all rolled up and all stacked in boxes like this as well. So I think I'll, uh, I think I'll get on with making some more. <laughs>